I don't think you can be a scientist and think very deeply about what you're studying without being, at some level, overwhelmed by it. I'm Brian Cox. I am a professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester. I'm also a professor for public engagement in science at the Royal Society. Science forces us to confront very big questions indeed about our place in the universe, but also encourage debate. In a democracy, people need to talk about science. I don't know what it is about the, the, the disaster scenario, it's so common in films, the, the end of the world, that is kind of perversely attractive. I, I probably need to have some kind of psychoanalysis for, for, for <laughs> a full course of to find out what it is that, it, to me, that I find... And attractive is even the wrong word, isn't it? Compelling. The Day the Earth Caught Fire is in some ways a classic disaster film. The plot, though, immediately is interesting because the disaster is a result of the fact that we uh, are detonating nuclear bombs and doing nuclear tests, and they damage the Earth. Well, the Russians have just about topped everything. MacReady got through from Moscow. They held an international press conference, had their top scientists present. They say that those two bangs did more than alter the tilt. They made an 11-degree shift in our orbit. And we're moving towards the sun. If you think back, first of all, to the time that the film was made, so 1961, so this is a time of extreme anxiety over nuclear war. In fact, it's only a few months, a year or so, before the Cuban Missile Crisis. So in some ways, it's prophetic. I mean, that, that film, the idea that by our actions, we could destroy our civilization, almost came through within the year. Science is different fundamentally, I think, from the arts in that there is a gold standard, if you like, against which you can be judged. You can be wrong. In the arts, you can't be wrong. It's not objectively a bad film or a good film or a great film. There is a debate to be had. What Wells typifies for me is the, 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 the power of science fiction. Science fiction at its best mm. can be an exploration of ideas. I was at first attracted to the man who fell to Earth because at the time, 13, 14 years old, what I wanted was David Bowie and science fiction. What you actually get is a film that challenges the way that our society works, the way that it influences people. I mean, there's a pretty simple plot, that Alien comes to Earth and initially wants to get back to his home planet and his family on the home planet, but he gets, uh, he gets distracted by gin and women. And, um, you see, I didn't see that when I was 13. <laughs> I'd yet to be distracted by gin and women. <laughs> I feel so bad, I've got a worried mind. Let's talk. I'm so lonesome all the time. Oh, don't Since turn on those damn TVs. Come on, Tommy. <laughs> talk to me. It's a series of impressionistic subplots, of vignettes, of thoughts. It's a film of ideas, not all of which naturally fit together, but which are, I think, beautifully represented and leaves you thinking. And that's, a, I think, this sign of a great piece of art. And this is where art is extremely valuable, is to explore the meaning of discoveries. For me, what films like the man who fell to earth, um, just remind you that actually that, that thing you're studying is more certainly more complex and more difficult to understand than, than we can comprehend at the moment. These are films that don't really have any direct relevance to what I do. I mean, I, I've never been faced with the dilemma that something I did has caused civilization to potentially come to an end and been asked to fix it or, or met an alien. So in that sense, what you're trying to do in, in a science documentary, you're trying to talk about science, but you're also trying to, using a shorthand, um, make people care. So, so I've always been the sort of person who will read a book or see a film and go, oh, I can use that. 
Oh, I can use that. It sort of distracts me sometimes from being fully immersed in the film. I think one of the films I remember really cheering me up and leaving me with a, a warm glow when, when I was younger was Local Hero. I think it's a tremendously sort of gentle film. It's a very funny film. I think it's one of the great film soundtracks and the theme from Local Hero. It's a very famous Mark Knopfler piece. One of the things I used to like doing was sort of um, sitting with my friends around a little fire and wear woolly jumpers and drinking a little glass of scotch. <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing that Local Hero in some ways leaves me with that feeling, this kind of happy glow. What would I be doing if someone said that the Earth has come off its axis and uh, you as a scientist need to try and take this, do, do the calculations to make this very small chance that we can try and fix the Earth's orbit? I'd probably say, no, I'm off to the Outer Hebrides and I'm going to listen to a bit of Mark Knopfler. <laughs> or David Bowie. And that's a cut. 